Well, welcome back to the Sycamore Hills Baptist Church Roundtable. This is the ministerial staff of Sycamore Hills Baptist Church. Right now, we are in discussions of parables from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, we do not rehearse this. We do not plan this ahead of time. We uh, go and we explore this, and we get to share what we have explored. The staff that you have in front of you in the upper left-hand corner, right-hand corner, whatever corner that is, is Doug Winkler, who's associate pastor of youth and family. There's the one that waved his hand. The one down below is associate pastor Tony Persley of music and education. And I am Willie Davis, the pastor at Sycamore Hills Baptist Church. This session, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 18, the first eight verses. It's called, In Various Places, Parables on Prayer, or the Parable of the Persistent Widow. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in English Standard Version. I don't know, Doug, if you've got another catchy title over there, but that's what we're going to be exploring. So, uh, Tony, would you mind leading us in a word of prayer as we start? Sure, I'll be happy to. Father, we are grateful that we have the privilege of opening up your word and hearing from you. So we ask that you would give us ears to hear. We ask that you would give us eyes to see. We ask that you would give us a mind to understand. And we ask that you would give us hearts that are soft and pliable uh, to your spirit's prompting as this word uh, is used by you to penetrate our hearts. And Father, as well as it's used by you to work in the hearts of those who will be participating by viewing this video. We thank you for this gift of fellowship, and we ask that you would use it to strengthen us, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who have been watching these roundtables, we do use three different versions of Scripture. Uh, mm -hmm. I use New American Standard, Tony uses English Standard, and Doug uses Christian Standard, I believe is what it's called. Um, and, uh, but they're all well, translated from the same manuscripts, so yep. okay, we're all yeah. good. We're safe, we're safe. Yeah. Um, so I think it might be good this time, Doug, if you are in reading mode, if you would read the first eight verses from the CSV. Sure, sure. Okay, starting in verse 1 of chapter 18. Now he told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not give up. There was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people. And a widow in that town kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice, so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the, then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay helping them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? You know, I've always found this an interesting parable. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have heard it preached in so many different ways and uh, some very troubling ways. Sure. And so we plunge into this one, and I, yep. I'm wondering if anybody is listening, if they already have a kind of a mindset of where this is going to go. Mm -hmm. As I have read it over and over and over again, it's very interesting because I think it's pretty clear in a lot of ways that we do not want it to be clear. <laughs> we want it to be something else. So uh, sure. I don't know how to plunge into this other than perhaps we see the parable being uh, shared with us from verse 2 through verse 8. But we have a leading in verse that I think right. is very critical for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it is that verse that gives us the purpose of this parable and should help us understand what takes place from this point on. Um, I think uh, I was trying to listen as you were reading a CSV, but in, in I know uh, English Standard Version and New American Standard, that there is a parable to show them, uh, to demonstrate to them, to the effect that uh, mm -hmm. they will know that they're to pray and not lose heart. So a parable, mm -hmm. honestly, of perseverance, but I've often heard this as perseverance in order to get your way, but I'm not sure that it's <laughs> perseverance in order to get your way. 
I yeah. think it's a parable on perseverance. So who wants to lead off and start talking about this? I guess I'll follow the normal normal procedure here. Um, yeah, I, I think there's it's, it's about perseverance and prayer, yes, but a very specific kind of perseverance in prayer because I do think that this flows organically out of what Jesus taught at the end of chapter 17 when he talks about the coming of the Son of Man. And he makes it very clear uh, that there, there will be a delay, mm -hmm. that there are going to be days when you're longing for the days of the Son of Man, and they will not be there. Um, but there is a day when he will come, and it will be clear as lightning shooting across the sky. Uh, but that day will come suddenly, and it will come quickly. But there might be a delay. And I think when we have that in in locked in our mind before we get to this teaching in chapter 18, we understand why se verses 7 and verses 8 are saying what they're saying. And this is teaching something, this is teaching something very specific about even the kind of prayer that, that Jesus is talking about. That's, yeah. that's where I would start. Well, how and, dare you link this to the content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and you know, so often it, it's so easy. We just start there because it's the beginning of a new chapter. Um, but yeah, when you read that, it is we need, and and you see this theme throughout the Old Testament of waiting for the waiting waiting on the Lord. Which really mm -hmm. waiting on the Lord means to trust God and wait on Him for His justice. And we, of course, we did have yes. back when we saw that there as well that that our timing is very different than God's timing sometimes, and that we, um, we think it should happen here right now, but God does have a plan laid out, and God is sovereign. And what is speedy to him may not be speedy to us, mm -hmm. but it's certainly the right time. And so um, we know that in, in the end days that things are going to be, are going to get more challenging for believers, and persecution is going to be very real. And as believers, we should be crying out to God, but what we should not do is believe that simply because it's not alleviated right then and there, that God is not listening or that God has left the building or that God is not involved. And I think this is a parable to, to warn believers um, about being faithful and being alert, but also understanding that uh, there is a God who, who has said this is going to happen and there is a God who will do it in his just time and it will be the right time even though it may not be ours um, that he answers. I think both of you have alluded to something that, that just goes through these eight verses. Um, if you go through and you see there's four times justice is brought yep. up uh, in, in English standard. I think it's yep. three in New American standard, but the fourth time is very obvious in there. Mm -hmm. that often I have heard this parable taught more of a persistence in prayer to get some prayer request that we have. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. here it is very clearly focused on that justice that comes in that preceding chapter. And I, I think yep. that that is one thing that is often missed when I hear this preached, and when I hear it taught, that mm -hmm. this is for the ultimate justice that is going to come. And, and, and Tony, I think you said it well, that uh, or maybe it was Doug. I forget. I'll have to go back and watch the video now. Uh, that that there there is this delay, and so in the delay, in the waiting upon God, there's a tendency to not persevere. Mm -hmm. There's a tendency to give up, mm -hmm. and so this is persevering until God brings about His justice here on earth and, and, and does it. Yeah, and, and you know, I think, and, and really, you're right. I've heard sermons the same way. And yet, when we look at Scripture, that interpretation should never be used because it's not held up anywhere else in Scripture that we can beg God or command God to do something. There are certainly yeah. people out there that propose that, that we can, we can make God do something. But we serve a sovereign God. We don't serve a God who is yeah. moved by what we say and will do what we say, even though that was not his plan. Mm -hmm. And so right. the idea that if I just bug God enough, he'll eventually give in. 
Um, yep. I mean, that doesn't even fit with the, with a sovereign, all-powerful God. <laughs> the reality is, if, if if I bug God enough to where he got upset, why would he not just squash me as opposed to give in to me? Um, that gives me a power, which is what, what I know many people want. Mm-hmm. That gives me a power that I really do not have. And so I have the power to wait and to trust God. I don't have the power to make God do something he shouldn't, he doesn't want to do. And how foolish that would be anyway. That I, I honestly think that in, in my very limited sinful mind, that somehow my idea of what is right and is good is superior to the creator of the universe yep. and who is all holy and all just and all righteous and all good, that my idea is going to give him a V8 moment like <laughs> I never thought of that. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense. And so that's an interpretation that, quite honestly, sh- shouldn't even enter into our, our, our idea of, of interpreting any passage because it doesn't fit with all of Scripture. It would be horribly inconsistent with the God of the, of the Bible. Yeah. I think part of the confusion comes, uh, in, and we've talked about this with previous parables, that they're not allegories. No. Mm-hmm. In, in fact, I think the contrasts in this parable are significant, right? Because yep. the judge is a contrast to God. Yes. Uh, because the judge uh, has no—he doesn't respect God, and he's not a respecter yep. of people. Well, God is not a respecter of people, but God certainly reverences His own name. Yes. So, yep. so the judge really is not a picture of God. Yeah. And I have trouble even seeing the widow as a picture of us because she's unknown. God knows his elect. He knows who we are. Right, uh, right. Even though I can have sympathy for the widow uh, because she is weak and she is uh, used right. in this illustration as one of the most dependent individuals that you would want to run across. Mm-hmm. And I can, I can see that. She still stands in, in contrast because she's unknown and known. And, and then... Doug, kind of as you, as you were pointing out, what a contrast! Is our God one who gets irritated and just gives in, yeah. mm-hmm. or is He one who is patient, long-suffering, mm-hmm. uh, and and very much in control? So there are a lot of contrasts in this parable that come down. That uh, often, I, I think, again, people say, "Oh, the judge is God; uh, the widow is us." No, I, I think you got to see the contract yeah. in there well and, and you know looking at the widow and what you pointed out we've been looking at hebrews 11 of course on sunday nights but uh, hebrews you know i think of, of coming before the throne of grace with confidence yeah. because of who we are because of who we've been made in christ yep. and she doesn't have that she is again the, the most disadvantaged in society and coming in and begging yeah. with absolutely no right whatsoever to a certain extent and that's not how we come before the throne of grace because of what god has done for us Yep. Uh, we can come with confidence as his children, not as a widow begging, just hoping that maybe he'll listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's not that's not us, and that's not God. Yep. I think it's one thing. Uh, verse five. Uh, I, I think when you read it, Doug, uh, he says something to the effect of uh, irritating. Was it because uh, it's pestering. Pest- pestering me? Yeah, pestering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's good. And, uh, bothering, I think, is English standard, and uh, yeah. uh, bother, I think, in New American standard, and that hardly speaks of the relationship of mm. a compassionate father yeah. Yeah. to sinful man and sinful man to God. I think a person who understands their sin, understands their helplessness, understands their weakness, knows that they have nothing to bring to pester God with. Right. And there's only only praise to come and yep. do that. So, Tony, you're silent. Well, I, yeah, I think those contrasts are are important. Um, he's certain that the judge is not uh, not the kind of judge that we would see commended in a place like the Book of Proverbs, um, or really even when we when we think about. Um, what makes a good king in the Old Testament? Because kings often were deciding things and, and judging things as well. You can think of Solomon and the dispute over the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he, he settles that dispute with his wisdom. Um, he would not be commended as a good judge. He would be an evil judge because yeah. he doesn't fear God. 
And even here, maybe in the respecter of persons means that he just doesn't care about people. Yeah. <laughs> um, he only cares about himself. And that comes through in his response. I, I just want peace. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll do this. But she is, she's in a genuinely disadvantaged position. Yes. And I think that we can identify with that. We, we are children of God, chosen, dearly loved. He knows our name. He hears us. But in this present reality in which we live, we often find ourselves in the position of the, the righteous ones of God who are in need of a vindication. Mm. And uh, that, that is where I think we might see, with all those contrasts, that might be where we see a parallel. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. There's something else in here, and I, I think it's part of the argument of the parable. Um, and I'm trying to think of the scripture reference, and you're going to help me out in just a second. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there, there is an argument all, also here of the lesser to the greater. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if this earthly judge, who is not a respecter of God and not a respecter of men, is willing to grant justice, based on this condition, how much greater is our God going mm -hmm. to execute justice when his character is not as flippant as this judge's character? Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking of the, the scripture, if an earthly father would do this, then, I, but I, I, it doesn't come to mind. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah Jesus, Jesus, pray, Jesus in Matthew 7, okay, there when he's go. talking about asking, seeking, and knocking, what father, if he asked for if his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. You know, if, if, if you being evil know, to have good, know how to give good things to your children, how much more yeah. does your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? Yeah. Oh, I knew you'd be. I don't know the Luke, Luke one. I, don't, I can't tell you the chapter and verse for the Luke one. I, I spend too much time in Matthew. I need to move on to another gospel. So I'm thankful for these parables. Okay, good, good. Well, like, thanks for bailing me out. But, you, you know, Will, that just made me think of something else, because you talked about um, and certainly the lesser to the greater, but, you know, why, why is the judge doing it so that she doesn't wear him out, or the, the little term is give me a black eye, the idea is maybe right. the reputation. Yep, um, shame. And, and you referenced earlier that God be, it does things because of his name, and I think of it, certainly of the prayers in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. many of those are God because this will, and I think of the prayers of Moses in particular in mm -hmm. Exodus, where he's saying, God, because of who you are, because of your name, don't let your name be, be lowered among the nations, do this yep. to protect your name, not because of us, but because of your name. So mm -hmm. God will act for his reputation to uphold it, um, not because we can destroy it, which is, and here she's coming in, and his fear is she's going to destroy my reputation. She's yeah. going to make me look bad. Well, we can never make God look bad, but yeah. God will do things to because his, he cannot do something against his character and against his name. And so that kind of prayer does does work to a certain extent. We come and say, God, this brings honor and glory to you, and do that for yeah. your name's sake. Then God does respond, but just the opposite of him, because God is righteous and this judge is not righteous. He will uphold this reputation. This justice is worried about destroying a reputation that obviously is not good to begin with, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Someone has to click yes on the ballot when we vote on judges, right? That, that, never mind. This is a, yeah. an election year. We gotta go in there. <laughs> how about uh, how about the last line, the last sentence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Relate that back to this parable and what's going on. I, well, if we think about the idea of delay, mm -hmm. and now I'm thinking of some of those parables of the kingdom that, that Jesus gives about the, the ten virgins. Mm -hmm. Five are prepared and five are not. Um, the, the porter at the gate, mm -hmm. will he be doing his master's business when his master returns, even if he's delayed? Parable of the talents, that might be coming up for us where the, the things that are entrusted by the master and that they're entrusted by him and then there's a delay. Yeah. And there is a reality in all of those that there are some who are watchful and waiting and expectant. They're faithful. And I, you know, I haven't really dug in to see if faithful is actually a legitimate translation here. Um, faithfulness would certainly flow out of faith. So we wouldn't see those things as 
um, in conflict with one another. Um, but you have some that are expected in doing the master's business. And when he comes, there's, there's eternal reward. Mm -hmm. There are others who just do their thing, right? They, they, they no longer serve. Uh, the, the one buries his talent and doesn't do anything with the investment that was given him. Uh, so they were never really, they never really loved their master. They were never really trusting in their master. Um, and that was evident in, in their actions. I think that's maybe part of what's going on here. And part of that faith even having to do with the, the watchfulness that comes through prayer. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I agree with that. And I, I see also the idea that, you know, I will tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. And again, within his timing. Um, yeah. God is the one who's waiting for, for the proper timing. But nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And, and again, I think that this really goes back to Luke 17, as, as you guys have said, that it relates to when he comes back, things are going to get more challenging as we get closer. And we, as believers, the elect will really stand out from the rest of the world. Yeah. It, we, there's no blending in any longer. And mm -hmm. the persecution will be there and the difficulties will be there. And the elect will hold on to their faith because they have been chosen by God and given faith by him to, to, to persevere. But when they do that, will they be praying in this way, praying to God and still trusting that he is listening, yep. and not crying out, God, are you, are you there? We, we may, that may be part of the prayer, but then always coming yeah. back to, I know that you are. But will he find faith? He will, but there may be not much faith. Um, you know, someone, I, I think I was reading, someone mentioned, don't forget Noah, there were eight. Uh, it's, uh, in, uh, in Southern Gomorrah. That's generous. <laughs> huh, pardon? And that's generous. And that's generous, yes. Yeah, sure. And, and there are four, you know, in, um, that were able to, with Lot and his family, able to, able to leave, that times of real difficult becoming, and in, in a sinful age, it is difficult to stand out and to be persistent. And Christ is saying that we know that the answer to this is he will find faith, but it may be a small number. And he's saying, if you're, yeah. if you're part of that elect, this is what your prayer will look like. Yeah. It will be faithful in waiting and in trusting, uh, persistent in prayer, but also persistent in trusting that God is there yeah. and he is listening and will do that, which is right. Yeah. And the idea of it coming swiftly, I, and I think you touched on it, not that, not that it uh, happens after a short period of time, mm -hmm. but that it comes suddenly. Yeah. Um, so my there's all this stuff going on and it looks really, really bad. And then suddenly, you know, here he is unexpectedly wow. marrying, given in marriage. That's in 17. I think that's what you see days of Noah, days of Lot. Mm -hmm. They're just carrying on with business as normal. They're not giving thought to, to any of those things. And then one swept away. Yeah. I will, uh, I will exercise one of my pet peeves too. Um, I've often said that when Christ asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. Yes. Um, so will yeah. he find faith on earth? He knows the answer to that. Yeah. He already knows what kind of faith he will find. Yeah. I think the question is there as part of the prompting of the parable. Mm -hmm. uh, will he find faith on earth is, will you be that person? This is, yeah. this is the application to the listeners, which I think yeah. were the disciples at this point. Uh, this is, you know, are, are you one who will be persevering? Because it goes back, I think, to verse one again. He yes. told them a parable to the effect that they ought, that's English Standard Version, that they mm -hmm. ought always to pray and not mm -hmm. lose heart. So yep. will, will I find you praying? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I already know the answer to that. But do you know the answer to that? Mm -hmm. Are you examining yep. your heart in regards to that? Yep. Okay. What are we missing? Oh, we're missing probably a lot, but uh, <laughs> well, what, what do we need to bring back up? Well, I think that this is also meant to be an encouragement. As much as it's a challenge, uh, it's an encouragement mm -hmm. to keep on, keep on praying, yeah. uh, keep on persevering. Mm -hmm. There might be a delay, but your, your father will care for you. And he will, he will bring vindication for you. Mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, even if it means that you're a martyr before it ever happens, because there's a vindication not only for those who are still alive, mm 
Mm -hmm. But there's a vindication coming for all who have looked uh, to God in faith and who have loved the appearing of Jesus. Uh, so it's an encouragement. It, it's not a, it, it's not a, it's not, you know, we, we, we were talking earlier about how some people take this in a really, really wacky direction with just praying for every, whatever you want. And you're just not pestering God enough, pester him more. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's not that at all. It, it's an encouragement to continue being watchful in prayer the Father hears you. The, the, the blood of the saints from under the altar that cries out how long is heard, and there will be vindication coming. This is, this is really a corny illustration, and perhaps later on I want to cut it out of the video, but I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to try something here. Uh, we're in the Kansas City area, and uh, so the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. I wonder how many Chief fans go back and watch the Super Bowl again, and while they're watching it, are still cheering, even though they already know who's going to win. Right, yeah. uh, right. And and they're cheering and they're enthusiastic and they're excited and they want to get everybody along to say, "See, there's," but you already know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there is a sense here. Okay, we know who's going to bring justice. Yeah, we know who's going to reign. We know we know that, and just because we know that, do I want to participate in quote cheer, pray on the sidelines? You bet I do. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do that. I want to persevere in my yep. prayer, just like a fan would. No, not just like a fan would. Much greater Much than greater, a fan yeah. would watching their team, even though they already know the outcome of the game. So yeah. here is that, yeah, I think this is an encouragement a great deal for me as, as a believer. Well, guys, we, we, we've kind of walked through this. What are you going to take from this? What, what enc encourages you, challenges you, comforts you, convicts you, whatever other thing I can come up with? Uh, what are you going to take from this? I was I was thinking about uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I was thinking about watchfulness in particular, mm -hmm. and what kind of an impact that has on my holiness, uh, my walking in righteousness before the Lord. Because chances are, if I'm not being watchful in prayer and looking to looking to the coming of Jesus with joy and anticipation and hope even when there's a lot of trial um i'm likely to be engaging in other manifestations of sin as well and uh so for for me it really is a challenge and an encouragement to to really dig in to that kind of wakefulness and watchfulness in, in prayer uh, because I think there is a sense in which that has a purifying effect on on my walk before the Lord. And and mine would be similar. The 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 real thing that really hit me was the again very similar to what Tony said. The idea of of waiting and that the, the waiting meaning trusting that for his again for his timing and not thinking that I mean I would never say out loud even in my head that oh. God must have missed this or his timing's off. But mm -hmm. I sometimes pray as if it is. Uh, I sometimes behave as if it is. I sometimes think, uh, this doesn't make any sense to me. But the reality is my, my job, that's the wrong word, but what I'm called to do is mm -hmm. to pray and say, God, this is, this is a need. This is, this is what's happening. This is a difficulty. This is an enemy that, that is, it needs justice. Mm -hmm. But the timing is really in your hands and not be fretting. And some, so many times I, I find myself fretting because something hasn't happened yet or I prayed and I expected it to happen at a particular time. Mm -hmm. That was really my mindset. Well, I thought, well, with the next two weeks. And that doesn't happen. And true faith is trusting God in no matter what, and trusting God for his timing, for his answer, for his justice, uh, for whenever that, that desires to come. And, and, um, praying even when I don't think the answer is when I don't see it there and it's longer than I thought it would be 
but praying, mm-hmm. understanding that God is a just judge. In his timing, he will do it, and he will do it swiftly, and he will carry it out. But I just need to trust. And when I, and when I question, I'm not trusting. I'm not waiting on the Lord. I'm demanding of God. Or, mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's unholy. That's ungodly. Yeah. I think one of the things that uh, kept coming back to me as I kept reading this parable over and over again is what am I praying for, first of all? Yeah. Uh, there is a, uh, within this prayer, and I think you have both explained it well because of the end of verse 17, there is an eschatological aspect to this prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and am I praying for his kingdom that's eternal yeah. to reign? Yeah. Something else, and I didn't mention this when we were talking about the parable, something else is, is the widow never prayed that the justice as she understood justice Mm -hmm. would be carried out. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing, uh, you know, Tony, you talked about some things that we can identify with her. One thing I can identify with her is she just went to the judge and said, justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so there's a, there is that abandonment in there. And I think a lot of times we like to take some of the Psalms of David (laughs) where he is talking about, uh, you know, bringing everything down on the enemies, and we Break like the to, teeth of the wicked. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I we we like to say, man, Lord, sock it to him, and, and and we're just saying, Lord, I want your justice, I want your mm-hmm. majesty, your holiness, your character yep. to prevail. Yeah, and there are a lot of things in this life, Doug. You pointed out, and I think you both have pointed out that tend to get my eyes off of that mm, yeah. and let me make sure that I am more eternal because I believe it will not be so heavenly minded. I'm no earthly good. I think it'll be heavenly minded so that I can be. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And, and that's the, the focus that we have. Interesting parable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think there's also Willie, I, I think this also really brings out uh, not that they're not, that's the only prayer in the Bible. <laughs> but the the disciples prayer that Jesus gave as a pattern for prayer hmm. because of those orientations where hmm. the first half is very much the eschatological your kingdom come your will be done as in heaven so on earth make heaven and earth one I mean that's what we're asking God to do uh, and then those practical things in the here and now that flow out of that that are linked to to the to God's glory and God's fame, I think for for believers, um, but it sets things in their proper perspective. So uh, I mean, there, and I think if we look at the other prayers like Paul's prayers, they're they're going to have a same sort of orientation to them. They may not follow a verbatim pattern, but I think we'll see those contours present there as well. So it's really it it it's turned into a vain repetition often, but it doesn't have to be a vain repetition. Mm-hmm for us to, to even pray that prayer verbatim. Mm-hmm. And, and then from that, let it sort of become a, a model for our praying. Great. Well, uh, I confess that a couple of weeks ago when we said we were gonna do this parable, I thought, oh, great. Yeah. And as I keep reading it over these last couple of weeks, it's gotten greater and greater Amen. and greater. It's beautiful. Doug? I think it's time for us to close out. Would you close us out in prayer unless you've got something else to add? I do not. So okay. we have to pray. God, we are we're so amazed every time we open up your word and discuss it, even something that we have read for many years and maybe many, many times. And God, we think we kind of have a, a, a grasp on it. And yet when we dig into it and then when we share and as iron sharpens iron, Father, we learn more about you. We learn more about your kingdom. We learn more about how we should respond. And uh, Father, we've never come out of one of these and, and said, well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I've got it all figured out. Because God, that's what your word does. It comes in and it pierces and it divides and it shows us who we are and it shows us who you are. God, we're so grateful for that because your goal is to make us like you. Your goal is to sanctify us so that we become like you and we represent you to the world. 
So Father, I thank you for the opportunity to do this with these brothers. And I thank you for the opportunity of sharing this with others. And I pray that this is something that continues and that maybe even models for others what they can do to dig into your word and let you work through that in them so the world sees you. And God, that's, that's our heart's desire. That's our prayer today. And we pray these things in the name of your blessed son. Amen. Amen. If you've been watching this video and you would like more information, you can contact us at www.shbc.net. And we invite you to come and join us for worship on Sundays and uh, not only Sunday morning, but Sunday evening as we continue our study uh, in God's word. So gentlemen, thank you for being with us. And you all join us next time as we look at parables in the gospel of Luke.